It is 2024 and thankfully it is proving to be the year of the affordable electric car. Finally, affordable electric cars. Enough of your £100,000 SUVs, I say. More of this. This is what it's all about. This sunny little chap here, as if you need me to tell you, is the new Mini. Or to be more precise, of course, the electric new Mini. You can get this car as a petrol car as well, uh, but it's not quite as new as this because actually the petrol version is a really overhauled version of the existing Mini platform. This, on the other hand, is the new electric Mini, and that is properly new. New platform, new design, new interior, even a new name. So you can't even get the Mini 1, Mini Electric, all of that anymore. It's just the Mini Cooper. Uh, and I think you'll agree, I think it looks pretty cool. But don't worry, we're going to bring you a review of the petrol Mini as well very soon on the Car Guru's UK YouTube channel. And while we're talking about channels, go on, you know what to do. Give us a like, give us a subscribe. Go on, why not go all out and give us a comment as well and tell us what you think of the new Mini. Here we're focusing on the electric Mini Cooper E. The options here are this basic E, which has a 36.6 kilowatt hour battery, an official WLTP range of up to 190 miles, and will do 0 to 62 miles per hour in 7.3 seconds. Or there's the Cooper SE with its 49.2 kilowatt hour battery and a range of up to 250 miles. And it gets a bit more power for a 0 to 62 mile per hour sprint of 6.7 seconds. Prices start at £30,000 for the Cooper E that we have got here, or thirty-four and a half for the Cooper SE that I think probably will be the biggest seller thanks to that longer range. I think you'll agree, it looks pretty cool, doesn't it? It's unmistakably a Mini, but very sort of smooth by comparison to the old one, which is what BMW is going for. They call it the pebble look. Maybe it's lost a little bit of its cheekiness in that sort of fascia um, compared to the old one, but I still think it looks very much modern, sleek Mini, which is what you want, isn't it? Um, so I do really like it. There's no five door, I'm afraid. Three door only. Uh, but I have to say the back, is it a little bit squinty? A bit like me in this really sunny field, sort of a bit kind of like, a bit sort of, uh, kind of a bit, a bit kind of, you know, I don't know. <laughs> Just like I say, it's kind of got a strange expression, a squinty kind of at the back. Maybe I'll forgive it that, I don't know. Maybe that's just me. It looks stanced though, doesn't it? How about this for progress? So this Mini costs pretty much the same as the outgoing Mini Electric but it's got more power and 30% more range. Things are getting better. Inside, you get a pretty dinky boot with 210 litres of space, but there is some underfloor storage for your cables and the seats fold down if you need them to. Or if you want to put people in those rear seats, well, it's not too bad. You'll get an average sized adult back there, but leg room is definitely at a premium. And to be honest, even kids probably aren't going to want to sit back there for long periods. Sadly, there will be no five-door electric Mini Cooper, but there's always the electric paceman and countryman if you need a more family-friendly electric car and you like Mini style. Or you could check out five-door alternatives like the Peugeot E208. Right, we are going to get to the critical question of how the new Mini drives in just a second. But first, check out the interior. I think it looks really cool. Um, BMW has gone to great lengths to make the interior materials look really smart. I really like this sort of tweedy finish here. There's even some really nice details, little rainbow stitching here on the dash. It's all very kind of textural. There's lots of recycled plastics in here too. I've got to mention this enormous <laughs> dinner plate sized speed readout here in the middle of the touch screen. So you get your speed right at the top there. There's very little frame to it too. So I have to say, I think it looks pretty cool. It's a very unique, very mini, you know, kind of thing. It obviously harks back to the original classic mini with its round speedo in the middle. But you do not get this head up display, which obviously gives you your speed readout behind the steering wheel, unless you add an option. I'm glad that they have that option, so that makes it fine. But I'm not a fan of this trend we're seeing at the moment of not having a speed readout at all behind the steering wheel. So I'm glad that mini has got that. In fact, I think this exact test car that we've got here, our nice little uh, mini Cooper E, in classic trim, which is the base trim, you can also get uh, exclusive and sport trims, but they tend to be more about the style additions rather than anything else. You get loads of equipment, even on the classic, but I do think you want to add the level one pack. Mini's a big fan of packs. £2,000 for this basic pack, basic, but that gets you keyless entry, heated steering wheel, this head up display, which is a critical factor, and also adaptive LED headlights. So I think the vast majority of people are going to add that. And that is all I'd do. I'd go for a classic Cooper E, I think, and you can go for the optional paint and wheels that we've got here as well. And then I think you've got a pretty good value little mini that looks really smart and has all of the features that you want. And I do really like this new interior. 
There's no rotary control of the big screen, but the screen itself is a new OLED display which has really impressive graphics and a decent response time. It's got all the features you want too, including Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, although it's annoying that there aren't any shortcuts to turn off Lane Keep Assist, and it's weirdly difficult to find a percentage readout for battery remaining. So, the previous electric Mini was one of the most fun electric cars that you could buy. It was really good to drive. So this has got quite high standards to live up to. And I think in many ways it does, but in some other ways it has sort of lost a little bit of that edge. <laughs> so to elaborate, basically I really like the way it handles. I, I don't know that it's quite as really nippy and incisive as the previous Mini Electric, but then some people will be absolutely fine with that. Um, nonetheless it's got a really good front end to it so you can sort of turn into a corner and there's a proper chuckability to it that's what you want with a mini isn't it you want that edge that sort of even in normal mundane driving you want it to feel really kind of low and like it's kind of darty and nimble and a mini and it does feel like that i have to say it's really good especially if you do put it into um go-kart mode here we go look get ready for it Woohoo! There you go, go-kart mode. I think that might get a bit tired after a t bit of time, but you know, uh, <laughs> the first time it'll be fun. And that weights up the steering and the throttle as well, so you get a bit sharper throttle response, and then it feels even dartier and more go-kart-like. So yes, I actually think the handling on this is good. Body roll's good, you can dive into corners, and it feels really good fun. I also think it has grown up in that um, there is I think it's just the, the driving position has changed. You sit a tiny bit higher perhaps than in the previous Mini, uh, but you sit a little bit further away from the steering wheel. It's a bit more grown up. I think it's really good though. You'd be happy to do long journeys in this car, definitely. Charging speeds are up to 95 kilowatts for the Cooper SE or 75 kilowatts for the base E, but both will do the usual 10 to 80% top up in around half an hour. The ride, however, I'm a little bit iffy about. So this car is the standard Cooper E, so you're talking 181 brake horsepower, not to 62 in at 7.6 seconds, and we are on a car that's got 17 inch alloys on it. This car actually rides pretty well. It is firm, you really do, f you do feel the bumps, but it's not jarring, so you can feel that it's quite a stiff car, but because the damping's reasonably good, I don't personally find it too much. I think it's a fair trade for a car that you know is going to be kind of a bit sporty. I don't think kids are going to want to sit in the back of it for too long with this kind of ride comfort and being fairly, you know, compact back there. Performance is fine. It doesn't sound fast, does it? 7.6, but it does pick up actually, even from higher speeds. You can hear that sound in the background. We'll talk about that in a minute. I like it. I think it's a pretty sweet drive. I just worry about that ride comfort because this is already on small wheels and obviously you can get this, the SE with, uh, bigger wheels, but well, you can get bigger wheels on this if you want to, and also with more torque in the SE, and I've not driven that car yet, the more powerful, the bigger battery one, but even with this much torque, so, so not 181 brake isn't that much, but it's got 290 newton metres of torque, and going through the front wheels of this car, you do get quite a lot of torque steer. If you accelerate hard, you can sort of feel the steering wheel kind of squirrelling around a little bit and that's where the car's trying to get power through those front wheels and trying to steer at the same time so it just feels a little bit corrupted and you can feel a bit like you're sort of fighting the car a little bit if you want to drive really quickly so there are definitely some issues with the way it drives but having said that i think as an overall thing it is really cool it does make me feel kind of more fun and youthful and cool and i like this it's a it's a cool car i do think it's a really good package and i do like the details they've put in like those sounds that i've already mentioned so not just the go-kart one but if you go for the um i'll tell you what i'll show you this so in go-kart mode it's even got what appears to be like a kind of pop and crackle on the overrun which amuses me um so you go it's quite funny you lift off the throttle and it kind of goes <laughs> I don't know how well you're going to pick that up on the mics I have to say but it does make me giggle um, and not only that but you can toggle through the experience modes as well and you can go for core mode it's got a slightly more subdued version of that one or timeless now this is supposed to be sort of the sound of a classic mini It 
doesn't <laughs> I, don't, I don't think they've quite nailed it to be fair uh, but you know it's fun isn't it it's just entertaining lots of people really hate this sort of synthesized sounds that you get in electric cars I actually quite like it provided you can turn them off which on this car you can so that's good I like that um, you know and it's not as in your face as the Arbath 500 for instance which has got that really kind of intense sort of synthesized noise outside and inside this is a bit more subtle than that so it's good I like it I just think it's characterful and uh, yeah and also there's always that range as well isn't there well we are seeing on very hot day and faster roads around about 140 miles to a charge i'd expect that to creep up to over 160 miles in more moderate temperatures and driving conditions while winter might see that range drop to under 120 miles so there you have it the mini i actually really like it as a as a package it's definitely got flaws but I think in terms of the style, the value it's offering, the range and how fun it is in context of other stuff like the Peugeot E208, um, the Fiat 500, all of those other cars that you can get at this price now, I think it's offering something really good as an all-rounder. Head to cargurus.co.uk for a whole host of fantastic used cars including loads of really great electric options and please do like the video, subscribe to the Cargurus UK YouTube channel and ring that little bell so that you turn your notifications on and don't miss any of our videos.